الذين يؤذون الله ورسوله لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة وأعد لهم عذابا مهينا ودوا ما عنتم قد بدت البغضاء من أفواههم وما تخفي صدورهم أكبر قد بينا لكم الآيات إن كنتم تعقلون. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, O Muslims, believers in Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى He stated in the Quran. فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَنَصَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا نُورَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ مَعَهُ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So they who believed in him honored him supported him and followed the light which was sent down with him it is those who will be the successful ones my dear respected muslims is it not success that you desire in this dunya and success that you desire more so in the hereafter then by Allah when the enemies of of Allah the enemies of Islam the disbelievers who have no respect and have no absolutely no love for the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam rebuke him revile him speak ill of him Describe him in a way in which is unbefitting for even a Christian to describe him as. That the Muslims then remain silent, deaf, dumb, blind to what is happening around them. Is this what will achieve us success in the hereafter? My dear respected brothers, our belief, our aqeedah in al-Islam, one of its tentacles is that we believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being the last and final messenger of Allah and love for him is obligatory without loving the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is no iman there is no faith but I give you glad tidings that when the enemies of Allah speak about the messenger of Allah in such a manner know that the victory is near Know that the help of Allah will come and these people will be humiliated. My dear respected brothers in Islam, Allah sent His last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a mercy to the whole of mankind. Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. Allah told him to say that in the Quran that verily I am a messenger to you all, Jews, Christians, Majors, fire worshippers, Muslims, believers and non and non believers. It is upon them to answer his call. What response can one say to the sarcastic pictures published in the Dillian's post uh, post the newspaper in Denmark? In it, it was issued on in September the thirtieth in two thousand and five, five months ago. They featured evil, shameless images of him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as shameless as any disbeliever imagination can be. Then again, in the days of Eid al-Adha, to confirm their enmity and hatred, the magazine newspaper from Norway repeated the same attack as if they were trying to reopen an old wound. And then they republished the images and then they republished the images that were published in the first newspaper. Then again, recently, a newspaper in France followed the evil of the despicable example of the previous newspapers. And then a newspaper in Germany, and then one in Netherlands, and then one in Italy. Look at the enmity that these people have for Islam and the Muslims. Indeed, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them is true. أَتَوَاسَوْ بِهِ بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ تَاغُونَ Did they suggest it to them? I.e. Did the former disbelievers pass on these words to the Meccans 
that the people then repeated the same expressions? No, rather themselves, they are transgressors. My dear respected brothers, they claim that these despicable pictures of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam were done under the banner of freedom of expression. This is untrue. There, are no, there is no such thing as complete freedom of expression. Look at these following, following examples. Very recently, there was a lady who protested outside the parliament's house about the Iraq war. When she began to read a list of the names of all those British troops killed in Iraq, she was arrested. Where is the freedom of speech and expression here? Another example, about six months ago, Prince Harry went to a fancy dress party dressed up as Adolf Hitler with swastikas and the small moustache and so on and so forth in an SS uniform. The media heavily, heavily criticized him. He was made to apologize. Rather, he had to beg for forgiveness. He apologized on numerous occasions about this. So where was his freedom of expression then? This, my dear respected brothers, we see in front of us now, is double standards. One rule for them, and another rule for our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And then what about the Holocaust? If anyone famous was to say that the Jews deserved what they got, or, were, or they were to agree with Adolf Hitler, or they were to speak about Jews in a bad light, they would be accused of being anti-Semitic. And in some cases, it is against the law in some lands. So where is this freedom of speech that they claim that they've done this act under? The truth is, my dear respected Muslims, that freedom of expression carries responsibilities. They know, they know this very well, but they apply it only to whom they wish. There is no such thing as complete freedom of expression even here in the UK. Try and slander somebody and see if he doesn't take you to court. Try and accuse him of something and see if he doesn't take you to court. Where is your freedom of expression if this is such a true thing? <clears throat> and then again from another angle. How does the West ever hope to build bridges between the West and the East when they show such double standards and they criticize the religion which the East is built upon? My dear respected brothers, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is far high above the evil that they attribute to him. There is no phrases that can encompass all the features of the greatness of this great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to spend his wealth like a person who never ever feared poverty. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to spend so generously. He went out. He went. He went to sleep hungry. He never said he never saved anything of wealth. He used to instruct his companions, may Allah be pleased with them, to be generous, saying, "Spend charitably, O Bilal, and do not fear Allah. That do not fear that Allah will decrease your provisions." He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was the most tolerant of all people and the kindest. If someone abused him, he would forgive him. And the harsher a person, and the harsher a person was the more patient he وسلم, would become. He was most lenient and forgiving, especially when he had the upper hand and the power to retaliate. He وسلم, was the bravest person, one with strong will, power, determination. He faced matters with steadfastness and patience. He would go through tough times and situations with firmness and perse perseverance. He وسلم, never uttered abusive words, he was clear in his statements. He chose his words carefully. He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was just, pure, and the most honest of all truthful people. He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was the most ascetic person, the furthest from from clinging to the worldly material possessions. He ate whatever he was offered and never turned down any type of food and never requested and craved for what is not available. He slept, my dear respected brothers, on a straw mat. He, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was the kindest towards the weakest of people. He was the most merciful to the miserable. He, 
and his, and his mercy included both humans and animals. He وسلم, he warned his companions against being harsh towards animals. He وسلم, said, a woman was punished in hell because of a cat which he, which he had confined until it died. She did not give it to eat or drink when it was confined, nor did she free it so that it may eat from the vermin of the earth. My dear respected brothers, the characteristics of this great Prophet Muhammad وسلم, are so great and numerous that it is impossible for me to stand here and speak about them all. Please move forward, brothers, so these brothers on the side can come in at the back. And these statements which I narrated to you are from authentic ahadith, are, are, are from the Muslims. What about the statements of the Westerners, the disbelievers, those that don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or this messenger? But look how they raise the status of this messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Michael Hart, author of The Hundred, he said, a ranking of the most influential persons in history, said, he, he, is a, he, he said, my choice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both the religious and secular level. George Bernard Shaw, the British playwright, has said, The world is in dire need of a man with a mind of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Religious people in the Middle Ages, due to their ignorance and prejudice, have pictured him in a very dark way, as they used to consider him the enemy of Christianity. But after looking into the story of this man, I found it to be an amazing and miraculous one. And I came to the conclusion that he was never an enemy of Christianity. And he must be called instead the saviour of humanity. In my opinion, if he was to be given control of the world today, he would solve our problems and secure the peace and happiness which the world is longing for. Look at this, my dear respected brothers. This is not even from a Muslim. Yet we find the despicable people who have evil in their hearts, who intend evil for the Muslims, to want to stir up trouble, speaking about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, describing him in the most unpleasant and most evil manner. But the glad tidings are yet to come. And to continue showing you the great rank of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in even the eyes of the Christians. Shaykh Lusam ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi, narrates, he said that the early prophets have informed their people that the one who falsely claims to be a prophet will not last, but for a short period only. One of the Christian kings heard a man from the chiefs of the Christians cursing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and accusing him of being a liar. So he gathered all the scholars of the Christians and he asked them, how long would the man who falsely claims to be a prophet last? They informed him the news that was, that was conveyed to them by the prophets. That it would not last but a short number of years, the lo at the longest 30 years. Upon hearing this, he said to them, The religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has lasted for more than five or six hundred years up to now. And it is prevailing and accepted and people still follow it. So how can this man be a liar? Thereafter, he beheaded the man who accused the Prophet ﷺ of being a liar. Defending the Prophet ﷺ, my dear respected brothers, is an obligation on each and every one of us. One of the rights of the Prophet ﷺ upon the Muslims is that, he, that they love him, and they honor him, and they glorify him. They follow his sunnah, and they defend him. The age we live in is full of evil and, and afflictions before in the Muslim nation where we are seeing vicious attacks by some monks and priests against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite that fact that they're cursing and attacking him sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite that fact it enrages us we see it as a sign of the nearness of the victory and their destruction what is the end, my dear respected brothers, of those 
of those who cursed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The early, early Muslims, they used to see it as glad tidings regarding the defeat of their enemies when they cursed and attacked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, Shaykh al-Sam ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi narrates, Allah will extract revenge for his messenger from those who slander and attack him. Allah will make his religion prevalent and will expose the lies of the liars if the people cannot apply the penal law of slander that he deserves. Very similar to the situation we are in. We cannot apply the penal law of slander, of cursing and belittling the Prophet ﷺ upon those newspapers and people who have done this. But Allah will revenge his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Many trustworthy Muslim scholars have conveyed numerous accounts of their practical experiences in differences in, in different cities and they said the Muslims used to besiege Romans for a long period some like a month and some even more until the Muslims almost gave up on victory no sooner than the dwellers of the Roman cities would start cursing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then that facilitated the victory to come and we conquered them it was never delayed for more than a day or two after they started cursing and defaming the Prophet ﷺ. Then we did win after we thought we were not going to win. My dear respected brothers, it is a duty upon us all. As I read out in the verse right at the beginning of the khutbah, فَالَّذِينَ آمُنُوا بِهِ وَعَزَّرُوهُ وَلَسُرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُورَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ مَعَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ So they who believed in him which is all of us in this room, honored him, supported him, and followed the light which was sent down with him. It, will, it is those who will be successful. So my dear respected brothers, what earth, what land, what soil, in the whole of this creation of Allah will hold you, if you do not stand and forbid this evil? كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوْنَ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ That you were the best of generations that ever came forth for the people. You enjoy the good and you forbid the evil and you believe in Allah. We're not saying stand up now and start marching to embassies because we know this doesn't work. But what we are saying is forbid this evil in whatever way it means you have under the Sharia guidance. For example, if you have money pay for a spot in the newspaper and write about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or give me your money and we'll hold a big conference in the town hall showing the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam those of you who go on the internet on so many numerous forums speak about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how he should be spoken about expose those evil critics those of you who can make dua which is every one of us in this room raise your hand and say oh Allah revenge revenge your, mess your messenger oh Allah revenge your messenger oh Allah revenge your messenger for verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has power to do all things and that is the least that we can do is make dua I swear by the one who honored Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and exalted his rank that our graves are more dear to us than being incapable of uttering the truth and defending our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam my dear respected brothers we will be raised by Allah yawm al qiyamah like the Jews will be raised when the Jews they knew the truth but they didn't follow it the Jews they involved in so much evil and they were ordered to forbid the evil and us very similar involved in so much evil yet we don't prohibit this big evil my dear respected brothers are your businesses your wealth are your children your mothers your fathers more dearer to you than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if the answer is no then you will be tested Allah will test your faith and this is the test which has come now the whole of the Muslim world is forbidding this evil 
the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is forbidding this evil. Will you not join them? Will you not stand up and defend your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? My dear respected brothers, there are many Christians even today that are not happy with what they've heard and seen. And are also forbidding this evil. So why we Muslims are so weak, we can't move a foot fi sabilillah? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, What is it with you? When, it is call, when, it is, when you are called to walk in the path of Allah, that your feet cling firmly to the ground. What is it that's making you cling? Is it the pompous life of this dunya? The haram things of this dunya? The drugs? The alcohol? The women? The money? Your friends? What is it keeping you away from practicing your religion? Religion? What is it keeping you away from following your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And I'll finish on a small example which I mentioned on the khutbah al-Eid, which I think is a good munasib right now to re-mention it again. About the people of Tawheed, the people of Kabair, major sins, but they were people of Tawheed. Who said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah about whom the, Mah- the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever utters la ilaha illallah whoever utters these words believes in these words the fire of hell will not touch him but then on the day of judgment after the accounting will come the people of Tawheed the oneness of Allah who were involved in major sins and their weighing of scales the bad outweigh the good and then they are flung into the hellfire by their beards and as they are flying, landing into the hellfire, they shout, La ilaha illallah. And the hellfire screams back, How can I burn those who say, La ilaha illallah? And then a voice will, be, will, will appear. A voice will be heard saying, Burn them, for indeed it is Allah's order. And then the fire will encompass them. And then the fire will scream again, Oh Allah, how can I burn the faces that made sujood? The tongue which, which utters La ilaha illallah And upon this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop the fire from burning the face Because of the sujood Because of the utterance of La ilaha illallah And thereafter Jibreel alayhi salam will come to visit The hellfire And he opens the hell, The Malik opens the hellfire for him And he sees in the people of Tawheed The oneness of Allah Being punished and being burnt for their major sins and they see Jibreel and they know it's Jibreel. And they say, Assalamu alaykum ya Jibreel. And he replies to them, Salam. And they say, Oh Jibreel, go to our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell him that nothing has kept us from our beloved except our major sins. And upon this, Jibreel alayhi salam will go to Allah. And Allah will say, Where have you come from? And he will, he will say, I have come from the people of Kabair, the people of Tawheed. And then Allah will ask, what is it they have asked from you? And he said, they've asked me to go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and give him their salams and tell them, and tell him that nothing has kept them from their beloved except their major sins. And then Allah will allow Jibreel to pass this message. And when he goes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Al-Jannah in paradise, how does he find him? Where does he find him? He finds him in the highest plot of paradise. He finds him in the hugest tent which has numerous gates and entrances all around. Covered in pearls and gold and slaves and everything of nice things. He finds him reclining on the couches. And he comes to him and says, Assalamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. And the messenger replied to him, Wa alaykum as salam, where have you come from, Jibrail? And he says, I verily I have come from the people of Tawheed, from your ummah, that are in the hellfire because of their kabair. Upon hearing this, he stands up and says, What is their condition? How are they? Concerned! And upon this, he replies to them, He replies to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that verily they give you their salam. And they say that nothing has come between us and you, their beloved, except their major sins. Upon this, he stands up and he marches to the highest place in paradise, 
بَيْنَ قَوْسَيْنَ as it was described as far as two bows of arrows to the bottom of the arsh closest to Allah leaving behind his beauty and relaxation of paradise and all the beauties and good things he climbs there goes to Allah at the bottom of the arsh and he makes a jud and he cries to Allah begging Allah to free them from, their, from this hellfire until Allah answers his dua one by one they come out of the hellfire washed in the in the river, on the banks, and grow up purified. This is your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Each one of us may be in need of his intercession. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq, to be able to stand and forbid this munkar. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cut the tongues, sever the tongues, and the hands of those who wrote and spoke these evil things. Ameen.